I think that those kinds of steps that you take before you invest in anything will really pay off in the end. Even if you don't do it the first time, you know, go through with the deal on the first time, at least it gives you an idea of like, okay, so next time, this is how I'm gonna look at something. This is how an appraiser would look at it. Welcome, this is the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping others through real estate investing. Our hosts interview guests from all aspects of real estate investing who generously share valuable experiences and advice. Whether you're starting out or an experienced investor, this is the show for you. Hello and how's it going? Welcome. My name is Travis Shelton and this is the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast where our guests come on and provide helpful tips and tricks to those of you investing in real estate. Today I'm pumped to have a close personal friend, someone that was actually in my wedding, um, join us today. Her name is Ariel Litt. She's the managing director of BBG Phoenix and a recent dog mom. <laughs> Welcome, Ariel. How are you doing? Hi, Travis. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for um, having me. This is exciting. Yeah, I'm pumped. Uh, so can you tell our audience a little bit more about yourself? I love the dog mom and I'm sure that they're really interested that, you know, you were in my wedding, but tell us a little bit more about your background and, and why real estate? Yeah, that's a, a very long answer, but I can condense it. Um, I uh, graduated when the economy crashed in 2009 and like most graduates, no one knew what they were doing, hung out for a while and ended up teaching preschool, which was, I will always say the hardest job I ever had ever. <laughs> that was the hardest job. But through that, um, you know, I ended up meeting a lot of the parents and one of those parents saw my work ethic and mm -hmm. gave me an opportunity at a really big a commercial real estate firm uh, that's international. Um, and I signed on as an analyst, had no experience in wow. any kind of finance or real estate, I'm telling you. I started from ground zero. He took a chance and taught me everything I knew. And uh, that was in 2013. And March okay. will be 10 years that I've been doing this. That's amazing. Yeah, I think I've only known you kind of in the commercial real estate world. Mm -hmm. And it's always good when you start from nothing because he, he, you know, you didn't have any bad habits to break. So that's awesome. Exactly. That you're an awesome person too. So that never hurts. I'm so glad that I've been able to be in your life with Aaron. You know, Aaron's just such a good friend of mine. And just to see how um, you guys have transitioned from the medical field into what you're doing. It is really cool to see when people just have a hunger for something that's different and they go for it. We always start our shows, Ariel, with some motivation. And I know you brought our uh, audience mm -hmm. a quote today. So can you share your motivational quote with our audience? Recently, I would say in the last few months, um, I have this really wonderful counselor who just, um, he said, he was really talking a lot about integration and okay. how that works in life. And for me, um, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, so a lot of my background and, and how I live life is in that fashion, um, just from scripture and, and um, faith. And so he said he wastes nothing and he invests in everything, meaning mm. God wastes nothing, you know, all the good stuff, all the bad stuff, all the victories, all the lows, none of that is wasted. It's invested in everything that you do. and. When you're in a low place, that is very hard to digest because, you know, you're like, how is this going to get used? Because I don't feel great. And maybe a little bit of a selfish thought of like, I don't care if this is going to help somebody in the future right now because I'm hurting. But that has been a quote for me that has carried me through some tough seasons and then been really sweet and in, in good seasons. So um, just knowing that everything, every choice I make, every good and bad thing that happens, it is never wasted. It's always invested into my life. I love that. I mean, there's something I have on my whiteboard that, you know, it's just fear not because, mm -hmm. you know, he's always with us. And when we're going through those hard times, you know, this too shall pass and yes. um, those sorts of things that you know that he's still there. And, you know, as, as a man of faith as well, you know, I always think of about uh, footprints and some of the times mm -hmm. when I'm in my most darkest hours or when I think, where is God in my life right now? I forget yeah. that he's actually carrying me like yeah. he's doing all the work and I'm actually doing nothing. Let's just transition right into our, our main topic today. And Ariel, how can you help our audience of real estate investors? Yeah, so um, I think I've told you this before. It's always good to have an appraiser as a friend. And mm -hmm. I know that appraisers kind of get a little bit of a bad rap because um, there's definitely 
uh, a personality type because it's based on our opinion of values. So there's always a little bit of uh, this idea that, <laughs> you know, appraisers are just really tough people. The mm -hmm. thing is, is if you get, you know, create a relationship, I love creating relationships with people. The immediate aren't going to be fruitful. You never know in the future. Um, so I think that knowing an appraiser is really important, especially if you're getting into investing because they actually, we're, we're kind of like these detectives, right? We have to dig up so much information. We have, there he is, <laughs> so much information that we love have it. to dig up. Um, we have to be able to really kind of find the, um, you know, if any, there's any buried bodies. So I get calls all the time from people before they even uh, do any kind of investment. Like, hey, how would you look at this? How would you underwrite this? What kind of expenses are you seeing? What are you seeing in this neighborhood? I mean, they, they throw the gamut at you. And it's my job to thoroughly show, okay, th these are the things that I'm seeing. This is how I would look at it. And um, I think that those kinds of steps that you take before you invest in anything will really pay off in the end. Even if you don't do it the first time, go through with the deal on the first time, um, at least it gives you an idea of like, okay, so next time, this is how I'm gonna look at something. This is how an appraiser would look at it. So I think those kinds of tools are really helpful when you're getting started. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, you kind of create that roadmap. So, mm -hmm. you know, talking to you in the past about deals, you know, and kind of picking your brain on how you evaluate a deal has really helped me analyze and underwrite additional multifamily deals moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I guess uh, for our audience out there, you know, there's these paid subscriptions to CoStar and some other like more fancy tools, perhaps. But is there anything that maybe the average investor or maybe a little bit more mm -hmm. cost effective way or tools that you utilize that maybe myself or audience could utilize? Sure, that's actually a really great question because CoStar is expensive. Yes. That is a very expensive <laughs> subscription. Um, even MLS, that can be expensive, especially if you, uh, you're you only doing, if you wanna go larger into the multifamily space. Mm -hmm. um, do not underestimate Google. Um, okay. I'll tell you this right now, um, especially when you're looking at small apartments, CoStar mm -hmm. usually doesn't have a lot of that data. Sometimes MLS does, but I'll tell you, there have been times where I have utilized things like hot pads, apartments.com, Google, Zillow. I will uh, nice. just type in an address that I'm looking for and just see what I can find through that, through public mm -hmm. records. If I find a phone number, I always try to call that phone number and see if I can get some data that way. It's important for investors to also kind of get out of the shyness of making cold calls. Like, it's, yeah, there is an art to it. I'm, I'll tell you this uh, for about two years. I had a script that I read because I was okay. so nervous to call. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally read off of this script for like two years <laughs> until I built relationships with these brokers because I didn't know what I like. I didn't know what I was talking about for a very long time. Try to have them educate us or tell yes. us what they know, and that's mm -hmm. that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. And and I feel like brokers have a little bit more time. I know I was one of those guys, <laughs> small fish, that uh, wasn't getting callbacks, and now all of a sudden everybody can call me back. It's amazing. Phones work yeah. in twenty twenty two, end of twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three. They started working again. Yeah, or my phone number started, you know, <laughs> magically being yeah. able to be dialed. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. You'd kind of yeah. mentioned something about appraisers and, you know, that you guys get a bad name or certain ones of you guys get a bad name. And I think about that as like as a realtor, or, you know, it's like in any business, uh, mm -hmm. even as a pharmacist, you get kind of this negative connotation to you. Sure. But they're not all the same. So help me out. Are, are there big differences between like a commercial appraiser and a residential appraiser? If I'm trying to build out my team or, or our audience is trying to build out their real estate team, should they have someone that kind of focuses on residential appraising and someone that focuses on commercial appraising? Or can you kind of do it all? Great question. It depends what your end goal is. Okay. If you are wanting to just build this empire of single family rentals or four units or less, absolutely a residential appraiser is somebody that you'd want on your team. If you want to look into multifamily that's five units or more, any other type of property type, you'll want to work with a commercial appraiser. Generally speaking, the methodology is still the same. You know, on the commercial side, we are obviously looking more at the income approach and cash flows and things of that nature. while 
Um, usually residential focuses more on the sales and the cost approach to value. You know, it just really depends what the end game is. Commercial appraisers have obviously gone through a little bit more education and we are licensed to do everything and residential while residential okay. is really siloed just into residential and four units or less. So I think an investor wants to ask themselves, you know, I think it's great to have both kinds of people in your pocket. You know, sure. you, it's, you can glean a lot of different information from both sides of it. And I think that can also, that can, that can be a positive and a negative because again, appraisers, it's an, our opinion of value and yeah. we are opinionated people. So you get a very <laughs> specific personality type with that. But I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think that um, that just shows that if somebody does their due diligence properly, that that's actually something you really can hang your hat on and you can trust them because they're an expert in that market. They're an expert in, mm -hmm. you know, small multifamily. They're an ex expert in the single family residential. So I think having uh, both relationships is great. Yeah, I love that. I always think about, again, just in any kind of real estate, you have people that focus on commercial or residential mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, even short term rentals right now. So I think yeah. that was a great point. Like you said, the commercial people I didn't actually realize could do residential, but it, it makes sense, especially in these in the short term rental world now when there's so much income producing properties and right. maybe they're not necessarily on comps going to really be able to hit hit the appraised value but maybe with the cash flow it's going to hit a you know a, a different loan like a dscr loan or something that mm -hmm. a person can still get financed with so really yeah. interesting and definitely glad i have you on my team I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell everybody in the audience that because uh it's really nice to be able to pick ariel's brain anytime i want all i have to do is you know maybe let her go out to happy hour with my wife <laughs> Um, yeah, exactly. Which is tough because I got to take care of three kids now. So that's, that's a big <laughs> ask for me. <laughs> we'll finish off uh, you know, this round of questions with maybe what's one piece of advice you'd give to someone starting out um, or where would you maybe restart? Um, I know you've recently kind of gotten into the world of investing yourself now. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give to some, you know, our audience that's just starting out in real estate investing? I would think it's twofold. Join networking groups, show up to happy hours, just show up. You never know who you're going to meet and what you can learn from just those side conversations. Mm -hmm. And um, this is something I still stand by, ask questions. Mm. Ask questions, be a person who is always curious and ask questions. Um, brokers love to talk about their deals. They love to talk about their accomplishments and the victories they've had. They like mm. to talk about the, the war stories. There's a sure. lot that you can learn when you ask questions about um, about deals, about how others got started. You know, I've had to really learn to be a good listener and not interject because once, you know, someone starts talking like, oh my gosh, I have all these questions. But I think if you can get really good at asking questions and not being afraid to sound stupid. I, sure. when I first started, I'm telling, I did not know what I was doing. <laughs> all of these phrases, all these words, all these acronyms. I, I literally had to Google a lot of stuff. It's a whole I other did, world. It really it's is. It's a totally different world. Oh my yeah. gosh. So I had to, um, get over that fear of being like, okay, you know, I just don't want to sound stupid. I don't want to sound ignorant. I don't want to sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. Our CEO at the time, um, he's our CEO now. He was our, one of our bosses you know, however many years ago, I remember telling him this and saying, I, I'm afraid to go to these huge conferences because I don't know what I'm talking about. These guys are, you know, throwing out all these words and rates and things. And I'm like completely in the dark. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, I'll never forget this. He goes, Ariel, if somebody ever calls you stupid or yells at you because you don't know something, you don't want to work with them. And they're probably not that good at their job anyways, if that's how they, they deal with things. It's the truth. It's right. Truth. So it yeah. just shifted. Once I realized that, I was like, oh, okay, so no one's going to get mad at you if you don't know the answer. Most people will actually relish the opportunity to teach somebody something. And again, talk about themselves. And yep. it's not a selfish thing. It's just that when you're an expert in an area and you've been through it in the years, there is something about wanting to bring up the next generation, right? So um, just get really good unique at in real estate. I think I, I, I find it so unique in real estate that people, like you said, will stop and educate someone else on a complex topic mm -hmm. or a simplistic topic. You know, a real estate syndicator will sit there and break it down simplistically to, to a brand new investor that's never invested in a deal before. Right. Um, an appraiser will take your time to, you know, spend 30 minutes with me and explain how you went over you know, the evaluation of a property, like it's nuts. And it's really like a huge collaboration in real yes. estate. I feel like a little bit yeah. different than other maybe industries. 
Yeah, I think, you know, the, the people that really have been successful in this industry, there's an integrity there where they know, like, you just don't do those things. You don't step into someone else's pond. You don't try and steal mm -hmm. away clients. Like, that does not, you know, that gets around really quick. That's a very sure. small community, right? So I think people, especially just the ones that I've worked with, have really high integrity where, you know, they want to help each other because you never know. In the end, that could benefit them. It's always that mindset of, like, I'm building these relationships for the future. Just another quick anecdote. I knew a, a kid that um, he was just starting out. He didn't know anyone, anything. He had called me. He goes, hey, I'm going to be at this conference. I'd like to meet you. And yeah. probably because like when you're younger, you seek out other younger people because you're like, hey, we cannot know anything together, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And um, little did he know, I had been in the industry for about seven years at that point, but he didn't know that. And we met and we were just kind of chit-chatting. He's a few years in and he's doing amazing. Like I'm now his client. He sends me work all the time. And that was just because I carved out 30 minutes to talk to this kid who just started in this industry and was hungry for it, asked a lot of questions. Still to this day, he'll be like, hey, I have this weird deal in the middle of California, you know, can you help? That didn't really manifest itself into a client relationship for about a year. So just knowing that, asking questions, putting yourself out there, you know, being uncomfortable. Like I go to conferences all the time and I'm still uncomfortable. Like <laughs> it does not get easier for me, but just knowing that if I just show up and I ask the questions and I'm personable and you find common ground with somebody, it benefits. So just be bold, get out there and be I bold. I love it. And I, I love the fact that you're willing to go and take that extra 30 minutes with someone you don't know, or just trying to help someone else out. And like you said, those things come back in droves, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's yes. kind of what this podcast is all about is helping other people. And it's amazing uh, how far we can get ourselves when you do help someone else. You, you spent 30 minutes, never expecting anything else back. But like you said, now this individual's brought you a ton of business yes. and also probably willing to refer you out to many, many other yes. people. So yes. um, that one little meeting, you know, can produce a lot of business. And I hear that story so just in different contexts. Yeah. Hi, my name is Chris Hallam of Simplicity Lending Group and powered by Nexa Mortgage. I'm a trusted and experienced loan officer who will work with you to find the best mortgage options for your needs. From first time home buyers to experienced investors, I have a wide variety of loan options and competitive rates, which makes me the perfect choice for those who are in need of creative financing. Contact me today and take the first step towards financial stability. All right, Ariel, are you ready to jump in the hot seat? I'm ready. <laughs> all right. So we ask all our guests uh, the final four hot questions. So we'll kick it off with question one. What is one book you'd recommend to someone wanting to know more about real estate investing? Um, well, this is really going to incriminate me. I don't like reading. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> I am not a reader. The ADD kicks in and I start, you know, going off. Um, again, I think I'm more of an in-person type of thing. So if something interests okay. me, I will seek out the individual and want to do coffee, lunch, dinner, happy hour. I do better in one-on-ones where that's where I can digest information. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had so many mentors send me books and be like, Ariel, read this book. And I'm, I'm telling you that bookshelf. <laughs> I was going to say, you got a lot of books back there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just for show because there's probably only like five that I've really read. <laughs> so. Okay. Well, I'll give you a recommendation. One, Audible. I never read a book until okay. Audible and I listened to a lot of books like driving to and from work back okay. in the day. And then two, there's some with like the cliff notes. I used to be a cliff note reader in like high school and college. Um, but there's like, uh, there's actually like uh, apps out there now that like will digest a whole book in 15 minutes or five okay. minutes. So you just have to, so maybe some of those books that um, people have sent you, you yeah. can just, you'll know like the main gist of it. So uh, maybe that'll help you. I have you. no reason <laughs> to maybe not have read no a reason. book. Yeah. All right, Ariel, what's your favorite productivity tip or trick or maybe a time saver app or hack that you utilize in your day to day? If you can get yourself an assistant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Done. Um, yeah, if you can, I I'll tell you, um, that's, that's, if you can, they, mm. I have an amazing, amazing project manager who she, uh, really helps me delegate throughout my day. Once you start accruing a lot of properties, once you start accruing a lot of a large client base, it's very helpful when you can delegate some of the tasks that no longer, it's not that they don't serve you any longer, it's just your time is better spent procuring work, doing the investment, 
you know, et cetera. What's your biggest real estate mistake or failure and what did you learn from it? Wow, that is a great question. Um, well, in the spirit of being vulnerable, okay. um, the, the process to becoming an appraiser is pretty daunting. It's mm -hmm. uh, at the time when I got my license in 2016, it was, you had 30 months to complete 12 different classes, 12 different exams and a national exam. So I remember while I was still working, uh, every quarter I was taking a new class, sometimes traveling for these classes. You know, at the time I thought it was failure, but I think that it actually gave me a lot of purpose in this industry. I did not pass my test the first five times. Wow. It was, I mean, I had to claw my way <laughs> through that process. It, I've heard it's a tough test. It like, is a tough yeah, test. No and joke. every time yeah. someone else passed on their first try, I was like, um, okay, so what is wrong with me? Like, this is just, is this even the industry for me? I put my head down. I had my mentor at the time. I remember him telling me like, hey, it's it's go time. Like no more messing around. You're gonna do this. And the fifth time I passed my test, the best feeling in the world. It was right after my right. 30th birthday. It was like the greatest feeling in the <laughs> world, right? And for a long time, um, that felt like a failure. I felt like I wasn't gonna be a good appraiser. I felt mm -hmm. like, I was dumb. I felt like I, you know, I'm just, I'm going to be at the bottom of the heap in this industry. And actually what I realized from that is that what I felt was failure actually ended up being testimony for people who were struggling, trying to get their licenses, trying to go through the process of getting their brokerage license, getting their appraisal license, and also struggling through it. I was just more vocal about it because that's how I process my emotions. Yeah. So what I really thought ended up being the failure was actually something that set me apart in a lot of ways and ended up being an encouragement to a lot of people. In a humble way, I'm now saying this, I am now the managing director for Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico. So it does not matter if you fail your test five times. It matters what you do with that. And what I did is I just worked my tail off. I worked so hard to meet people. I asked questions. I did hard appraisals and that work ethic paid off. I love that. It's so funny that like all these little failures in life, they tend to make you stronger. So Ariel, if you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be? I have to pick just one thing. I think I would like to be remembered for um, my character. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really well-rounded way of saying, you know, I just hope that, you know, people, when they talk about me, they're like, she has integrity. She's kind, you know, she's uh, creative and she loves really well and she takes her job, you know, she really, she's passionate about her job. I just want, uh, I would love that whenever people think of me, they're like, that's somebody I wanna be around and somebody I wanna work with. Well, that's definitely how I feel about you and how my <laughs> wife feels about you and how all your friends and family that I Thank know you. feel about you. You're an amazing person and uh, just a joy to be around and just, you know, you, you lift up other people and, uh, you know, I'm sure in your business life too, just from the stories you, that you've already shared that you do the same in your business career. Thanks, Ariel. And we'll definitely include all your contact information in our Great. show notes. Thank you, hot REI community for listening in today. Um, I hope Ariel brought you guys a lot of value. I know she did for me, you know, I, and I definitely think an appraiser is someone that you should have on your real estate team. We always talk about um, who might be a good uh, addition to your team or maybe a tool for your tool belt and somebody uh, that you might be able to connect with and, and really gain a lot of uh, information and knowledge from. And an appraiser to me is extremely vital, whether you're in residential or whether you're in commercial real estate. Um, you know, these are the people that are really going to be able to tell you the value of your properties. You know, that you're going to glean a lot of different information from an appraiser as a pair to maybe just a comp analysis from a realtor or a CMA. So definitely add an appraiser to your team. Contact Ariel if you want to touch base and, and talk to an amazing uh, team member or an app amazing appraiser. And I really appreciate you all for listening in today. God bless and take care. Signing off now. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Hot Real Estate Investing Podcast. Check out our website, hotrei.com, for additional content and resources. And please take a moment to subscribe and leave a review so we can continue to bring even more value to others through real estate investing.